So in the world of business networking, few have done it better than the woman that we are about to speak with today. Today we are joined by Stacy Harris, uh, Network and Action franchise owner. Stacy, how are you doing today? I am great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. And uh, what? Good to see you. You as well. We were just uh, <laughs> talking before this how last time we saw each other, each other was at the uh, Network in Action Summit. Um, just before COVID decided to come in and, you know, blow the lid off of things. Change our lives. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just go in there and like the sandcastle we built and just try to kick it down. But COVID can't do that to NIA. It cannot. COVID nope. will not win. Exactly. Mundo. <laughs> so what, what part of the, uh, the, the country are you servicing? I am in the Woodlands, Texas, which is just north of Houston, about 25 miles north of Houston and we are in a beautiful little people call it the bubble Mm -hmm. Um, it is very much a bedroom suburban community um, filled with we have just tons of trees and it's just a gorgeous little piece of the world and I've been here for 15 years and a part of the business community pretty much that entire time so it's been a huge blessing I tell my husband it's a straight shot to heaven from the woodlands oh that's a beautiful thing (laughs) So, so um, you've been there for 15 years. So what were you doing before Network in Action? Um, I had uh, an image consulting company that I just really put to bed about two years ago. So when I first started doing Network in Action, I was still doing my image consulting company. And um, I worked with individuals at first on personal image. And then as the business kind of morphed and changed and my reputation grew in the community, I started doing, um, working with businesses more and more on their reputation in the community and how to, I did a lot of helping them put on events and things like that. And then I ended up working on contract with the Woodlands Mall and with uh, Market Street, which is a high-end retail shopping area up here. and um, I used to do all of their PR events for them. So their fashion shows, their ladies nights out, men's night out, um, different community events and things like that. So um, that business afforded me the opportunity to meet just a ton of people. And between Market Street and the Woodlands Mall, all the events that I did, I worked with pretty much every nonprofit that we have in the community around here. Um, And just like I said, I got to meet a ton of people through all of that, which um, really parlayed very nicely into what I am doing now. Because when I decided to launch with Network in Action, I had an inordinate amount of contacts. The people at the app store hate it when I get a new phone and we have to download all of my new contacts. Amazing. (laughs) (laughs) For all of my contacts, it takes a while. They're like, "You you have how many thousand in this phone? So, yeah. Yeah, you were you. If anybody was set for this and just like from the get go on the jump, it, it yeah, was your. I mean, I, I remember God attending. completely laid out my life perfectly for this. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was at your first meeting, and and um, you know, we're we're looking at this like packed room, and I'm like, oh my God, this. All right, so she's got it. <laughs> you we know had what? Seventy five people at the first meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember, man. Yep, at yeah. the info meeting. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, I mean, you launched your your franchises right from the jump to to great success. And, uh, you know, I, I want to attribute it to, you know, Stacy Harris and has some kind of secret sauce, <laughs> but, um, but really, I mean, you know, you've, you, you've had this network of people, which I think is just a testament to networking as a concept in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you brought it here and, and you, you brought the value that we're here to provide. So, um, kudos to that. Um, so, so what made you decide was there a tipping point that you you were like okay you know what uh, of all these franchises of or of any uh, infrastructure that already exists what made you decide to go with the network and action franchise model mm-hmm. you my story was really one of um it was just it truly i mean i say it's a god thing it was just the next step of my life and i just didn't know it i had been involved in bni Um, for nine years in this area and I used to help run the region I was an ambassador I used to train all the incoming presidents so I'd been very entrenched in the networking community and I had just kind of outgrown what B and I could do for me and it was time for me to move on and 
I put out an email. My business, like I said before, had started to move in much more of a corporate direction. And I just really decided I needed to, I needed to be networking in a bigger fish, bigger pond. And so I had decided, okay, Houston, I'm going to conquer it. I've conquered the Woodlands networking community. <laughs> now I'm going to get involved in Houston. And, um, and it sounds like, you know, we're 50 miles apart. It's really only 25 miles, but it's really a whole different world. Yeah. And as far as networking, and I always say I have to get a stamp in my passport to go into Houston. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like just going to a whole different country. But anyway, I put the word out to everybody that I knew here. I sent out an email to about 25 or 30 different people up here and said, Hey, I'm going to, you know, start networking in Houston. If you know of any good groups down there, I'm going to pick one day a week, go down there and start getting to know people. And one of my friends up here actually knew Moose Rosenfeld who was the very first franchisee with Network in Action. And he put me in touch with Moose. And Moose invited me to come to one of his meetings. And Scott Talley, our founder, was at that meeting. And we had a conversation about NIA. And he was curious why I was visiting, you know, from the Woodlands. And one thing led to another. And in that conversation, he just said, why would you come all the way down here to be a part of the group here? Why don't you just start one up in the Woodlands? I'm looking right for a franchisee up there. And at that moment, I tell everybody, it's kind of like the old cartoons when you see the cartoon character get hit in the head and you see the stars and the birds <laughs> going around their head. That was how I felt. It was like, oh my goodness, why don't I do this? This yeah. is, I was built for this. This is perfect. So um, really what I had been doing for BNI for so many years and um, not getting paid for it, not that I didn't have rewards from being a part of it. There were lots of blessings that came from it, but there was no monetary, you know, reward involved and it you know i just started thinking about it like oh my goodness all these hours that i've been putting into bni every week i could actually do this and make money support yeah. my family you know this would be an extra stream of income for me at the time and um i literally left the meeting got in the car called my husband and said honey i'm buying a new business um, this is it. so that was the end of may four years ago and uh, i was signing the paperwork six weeks later we were doing it so right on. started out with two franchises and then now have five and yeah it's yeah. it, a full plate right there and that's a, a lot of people that um you know are counting on you to provide awesome leadership mm -hmm. and um if anybody's going to be the one to do it i know it's you Thank so you. as somebody who you know has one of our founding members i mean or, i'm sorry one of our founding franchises um, is there any advice that you might have for somebody who is is looking at a network and action franchise or a franchise in general? Um, right. Any any words of wisdom you might be able to bestow upon them? Um, it you know you really do if you're if you're going to do this, um, you really do have to love people and love helping people solve their problems in business. And you really have, need to have a true desire to make it all about the community that you're building right on. and to put the emphasis on that. So, you know, I tell everybody I'm a matchmaker for business owners and that's really how I see my role is I'm constantly out looking for the best people I can find and to put them into groups that are going to have good synergy. And you're the only way you're going to be good at that is if you really learn to listen to the people that you're talking to and find out what makes them tick and um, that you are able to put them in the right group so that they do have this great synergy and they do find referral partners and, and um, people who will be great resources to them. So, um, you know, I would say have, just have that true love of people, make it all about them and um, want to build a community, make it your desire to really have a community it's not just about the individual members but it's about everybody as a whole and how right how they come together and it's really magical the things that will happen the partnerships that will be formed um, when you put the right people together in the right place and the other thing i would say is be picky be very selective about who you allow in your groups you know, just because somebody can write a check and it will clear, it doesn't mean that they necessarily need to be a part of your group. Um, don't let anybody in your group that you don't truly enjoy being around. 
somebody that, you know, if you don't want to spend time with them, probably nobody else does either. <laughs> so, you know, um, it sounds very simple, but it can be, you can get caught up when you're first getting started in just building your numbers and you do want to have that, but it's also quality versus quantity. You know, you, you go back and right forth on. with that. So um, be selective with who you allow. It is a privilege to be a member of an NIA group. Um, and I know that my members tell me, they know how picky I am about yeah. who I allow in my groups. And they tell me how special they feel that they have been asked. It's a status you know, thing. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, it really is, which I love. I mean, that wasn't really my intent was for yeah. it to be that so much. But, but you know, it's when you make a referral, when somebody refers someone um, to a client, to a family member, you're putting your name and your reputation on the line. And you want to be sure that the people that you're referring are good quality people and they're going to take care of, of the clientele that you send their way. Because yeah. if they don't, you will hear about it and it will, it will damage your reputation. So mm -hmm. if you are selective about the people you bring in, making sure that they know what they're doing and they're good with people and, and genuine in their desire to help people passionate about what they do. I always say I'm looking for happy, positive people who love what they do. That's so, a, that's a good criteria. Yeah. So, you know, even though I have five groups and people ask me all the time, what's your best group? And I say, well, that's kind of like asking who's your favorite kid. Yeah. You can't really pick one. Mm -hmm. um, my groups are very much alike in personality because I am looking for a type that happy, positive people who love what they do. Right so on. be selective about who you allow in your group um, because that you're picking who you work with. And we've all dreamed of that when we had a J-O-B, right? Mm -hmm. We all wanted to decide how things were going to go and who you were going to work with. And as a franchise owner, it is totally up to you. You create the culture and the attitude of your community. All right. Excellent. 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 And, you know, normally at this point I'd ask something silly like, Oh, what's your favorite, what's your favorite, uh, uh, group activity or something like that. Mm -hmm. But from you, you've been doing this long enough, you know, enough people, um, do you, is there a particular story, uh, about networking or a member? Um, that you are, are most proud of that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I mean, it, there's, there are a lot, there's, there's really a lot, but I think, um, the most for me personally, um, and it's, it is very personal is that, uh, two and a half years ago, my husband suffered a traumatic health event mm. and, um, he had an abdominal aortic aneurysm and okay. an aortic dissection, which means that the aneurysm in the middle of his chest was so large, it split his aorta from top to bottom. I can remember. Less than 5% of people survive one of those things happening. Less than 2% survive both of those things happening mm. at the same time. So when it happened, he was actually in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on a business trip. And um, Baton Rouge is a relatively small town, uh, city. They didn't have a trauma one hospital. They were not able to give him the care that he needed. And we knew there was going to be a surgery involved and there was no doctor in the state of Louisiana that was qualified to do the, the kind of surgery that he was going to need. And um, when I, when I flew to Baton Rouge, you know, there was this horrible feeling when I got off the plane, cause I'm so used to knowing everybody around here. And I know anything I need, I can just pick up my phone and it's, it's minutes away, you know, yeah. whatever I need. And um, there was this, horrific feeling that I had when I got off the plane and it was about a 30 minute drive from the airport to the hospital. And I was texting with one of my best friends and NIA member. And, and I told her, this is just the weirdest feeling. I don't know anybody here. What if I need something? Yeah. And literally been in that time, like between hospital, between airport and hospital, I started getting flooded with text messages. The word started to get out, you know, what was happening. And, um, I started getting text messages and it was, my sister lives in Baton Rouge. She is, and it was from all NIA people. My sister lives in Baton Rouge. I've told her what's happened. She, here's her number. Here's her name. You call her if you need anything. You know, my college roommate is in Baton Rouge. My friend works at, at the, you know, this business that's right near the, the hospital that you're going to be in. And so literally by the time I got to the hospital, I had probably 10 different names and numbers of people who were in Baton Rouge. If Beautiful. I help. And then on top of that, there was, it was a whole big thing of us having to get him transported from Baton Rouge back to the woodlands and it was completely my networking contacts um, afforded us to be able to get him moved we got him a cardiologist we got um, one of my contacts as a doctor she got us in with the number one aortic surgeon in the world 
is wow. in Houston and she knew him and got us in. And, you know, here we are two and a half years later and he is still with us and, and doing well. So, you know, that was all, I mean, literally my networking contacts yeah. saved, saved his life. Yeah. That's your, that's your community right there. That's the community yeah. that you cultivate. Yeah. So, you know, that is my, that's my big story that I tell people. <laughs> and then, you know, there's so many, so many great things that have happened along the way, um, you know, with members that, that have been able to make contacts and support each other in their businesses. I had two different mortgage companies that actually ended up merging together. They met at, we have a coffee once a month wow. and um, each one of them was struggling in their own way. And um, they met at the coffee, two different groups. They met up, they started talking, they merged their businesses together and were able to come together and build a very strong company that has now grown into four or five different states. Wow. So, and that all just started from a, from a conversation. And I found out this week, I'm one of my members of the dietitian. She's been with me for a couple of years now. I introduced her to a couple, they do catering put them together and now okay. they are coming up with their own product line of healthy, delicious meals. That's that where it's at, man. Yeah. That yeah. are going to be delivered. So, I mean, it's just, and stuff like that happens all the time. And sometimes they tell me about it. Sometimes they don't. I find out about it after the fact, yeah, right. but that's great. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's really amazing, man. And so, you yeah. know, I mean, obviously NIA makes a difference. These communities that you're building, mm -hmm. you're doing a great job, but the, you know, I'm not sure if it's said enough, but I mean, you're the queen over there. Okay. <laughs> so you need to just keep on rocking it. Um, you're doing great. And we're so glad to have you as a part of this, this family here. So um, I got to let you go. But I mean, if there's anything else you wanted to, to maybe uh, extend an invite or maybe some other words of wisdom you wanted to uh, let prospective franchisees know, um, drop it right now. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say for me, I am so grateful for Network in Action. It changed my life. It afforded me. I had my image consult consulting company for many years, but it was always feast or famine. Um, it was never consistent income. And NIA for me has created a very nice income with consistency. I get to do what I love. I pick who I work with and I'm able to make our corner of the world better with this community that we're building and the autonomy that we have of having corporate backup, but being able to decide the culture and the community that we are gonna build as franchise owners. Um, I'm very, very grateful for that. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity and um, I, have never, I have never looked back and it's truly one of the best decisions I ever made. So for anybody out there who is thinking about buying a franchise, and they feel like they have what it takes to do it, I really encourage them to take the plunge and just do it. Don't look back. There's no secret sauce. It's hard work and loving people and treating other people the way you want to be treated. That's it. Right on. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Stacey Harris, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Dan. Good to see you. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.